And welcome to Musicians Reveal with Joe Kelly. And we are really excited today because our next guest, singer, songwriter, author, artist, very, very talented lady. She is joining us from the San Francisco Bay Area. She has a brand new album called Happy Anyways. Her name is Cloette. How you doing, Cloette? I'm doing good. Doing good. And uh, you're busy, of course, letting people know about this great album, all the great music. What's What's been going on lately? Um, as far as music or which genre? Promotion, you promotion. Yes, now that the, the album's in the can. Right. Okay. So what's been going on lately is I've been getting a lot of um, I, journalistic press, um, which is, I really enjoy that. I enjoy that area being that I'm a writer too. So I really enjoy these interviews by great people like yourself. Um, I am performing. Um, I perform locally. Um, I do some performance. I just did like a music conference in Philadelphia. I did something in Florida. Um, you know, I perform locally throughout California, but I'm looking to launch my promo uh, tour uh, for my album this winter okay. in the United States. It's a small, intimate promo tour. And then I'm supposed to be doing another international leg because I have some, you know, some acknowledgement and notoriety overseas. So. All right. Yeah, the UK has been really nice um, with uh, Greedy, right? Yeah, but yeah, and actually I have a relationship with the UK with my music prior to that. So um, the first song on my album, Music is Love, it was um, produced and written by a Grammy Award winning um, duo, DJ Jazzy Jeff and Carvin Higgins. And um, that single was doing so well one time in the UK. I was number three on the charts. Mm -hmm. So I actually had like a really good reception from the UK. And that was even before my album was finished. That was months, months before my album was finished. So I think some of my, um, you know, connections down the UK, I don't think they've even connected and correlated like me, like greedy. And then my song music is love. Cause they're, you know, they're, they're kind of a little different vibe. I'm the same in it, but the vibe is a little different. It's really soul like really mm -hmm. like neo soulish my first song and ingredient is just like really funky and electronic and just you know it has a lot of character to it and i think some people haven't even connected so if they connected i think it'll be even it'll probably be even larger of a reception but i yeah the uk showed me a lot of love i love the uk i can't feel my own melody it goes yeah music is love you know when i first heard it i was like I thought George Clinton was going to step into it. Just the beginning part of it. I, I you know, I got that like P-Funk vibe going. Really? You know, and then That's it just went, yeah. And then it went right into your great voice and and, and the video is great too. Oh, uh, thank you so much for acknowledging that. I just, I have to appreciate you out in the open for actually listening to my album and looking at my content. I know the way life is set up now with social media and you know, it's just a lot of we intend to, but people don't listen. You know, they really don't listen. They don't have the time or, you right. know, they just get a little glimpse of it. So I just appreciate that you actually listen, that you looked at some of my content connected to my music. It makes me feel so good that I know that you're you're interviewing me because I obviously am an interest to you. Right. So right. I appreciate that. Yeah. Yeah. Much love to you back and. uh you know, we watch the live stuff uh, on YouTube and, and it's also streamed through your website, Cloette.com. You see Cloette's name right there and we'll have the link in the uh, the description of the show right at the bottom. But um, talking about uh, Music is Love, where, where did you film that video? I filmed that video in Los Angeles. Actually, it was in Beverly Hills. Mm -hmm. And what I wanted to do with that video is I wanted to pay homage to like just kind of the history of where it came from. So like to sum up as much as I can, like I said, DJ Jazzy Jeff, um, he did the production. I recorded that song in his home studio mm -hmm. and the song was really magical when we created Carvin Haggins is an excellent um, Grammy award winning songwriter. Um, he's a genius when it comes to that. And when we created that song, you know, I was in Philadelphia at the time. And when we did that song, Everything was done on the spot. 
with that song. Like there, this was he. You know, Jeff didn't have like a archive um, beat or something. He made that music on the spot. Carvin started to you know write the song. I got in the booth and performed. I mean, we knocked it out like that. I mean, it came literally like as is. Wow. And the I always remember that. I remember the feeling that I had when I did that album. I mean, when I did that song. So when I did that song, I remember the way that Jazzy Jeff received me at the time. It was me, my husband and my sister. They were mm -hmm. with me when I recorded the album and I had never met him. I knew Carvin and Carvin basically was like, Hey, you know, I have this person. I want to do this song with her. Like, I think she's, you know, think she's dope. Da, 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 da. He brought me to his home. He never questioned me like, well, who is this or whatever? You know, he obviously that was his relationship and his trust he had with Carvin. Right. But he welcomed me into his home. He introduced me to his mother, my husband. He introduced us to his mother, his wife, everyone that was there at the time. His son, Amir, which is grown now. But he was a little boy when we were there. And he just it was such a like he was such a genuine person. So when I did that video, mm -hmm. I wanted to pay homage to like the you know the whole like historical musical like the scene and the the heavy hitters behind the music in philadelphia um with him you know his origins of you know fresh prince and dj yeah. Jess jeff so in that video my husband was my main uh love interest he's always gonna right. be my love interest in all my videos That's cool. and um and he's also my counterpart in music he produced um 90 of the songs on the album excluding okay. the song Jazzy Jeff did. And then one song, my happy anyway song was a different producer, mm -hmm. but he did everything else that you hear. He's a talented musician. He's a drummer. That's his main thing. He's the drummer in my band, but he plays like several instruments. But if you notice on the video, he was dressed like Fresh Prince. Right, right. So like in the video you know, with the, the, the opening credits of the movie. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure that, you know, I, I filmed it in Bel Air. And in Beverly Hills. So it was a lot of like idiosyncrasies wow. that I put in the video. And I did that to, I just wanted to acknowledge, you know, like the origin of, you know, Jazzy Jeff. I really wanted to breathe that. And, you know, Philly, I just wanted to breathe that, you mm -hmm. know, into it some kind of way. And because I'm in California, you know, it made sense for me to like, you know, not travel as far. And I was able to just go to Bel Air and Beverly Hills and actually film it. So that's where I actually filmed it at. Yeah, that's a great tie-in, you know, the Philly sound. I, I lived in Philly 85 through 87. And mm. um, also, I've, I've seen from video Jazzy Jeff's studio where he records his uh, DJ mixes. I think he's on Mixcloud as well, or he was. And it, it's, it's dope. That, that whole studio is really nice. You know, I think it's, but that's a different studio. from. Oh, when okay. I, I was, it was literally his home at the time. Okay. And it was like he had it down. Oh, it was very nice. But it mm -hmm. was like in his downstairs or basement or whatever. But it was nice. It had like okay. a theater in it. It was really nice. But it was actually at his home. Okay. And so, yeah, that's where we recorded it at. It, it's so much. It's so many things about that. That song. I could tell you so many things about when I did it. It's right, just right. funny. <laughs> People that, you know, it's an older song. Right. And it's and that shows how timeless it is. Even my song on my album, So in Love, that I mm -hmm. did live. Um, and that was a tiny desk submission, you know. They slept on me, but it's okay. <laughs> One day they may be right. calling me and asking me to come on there. But um that song is an older song too. Like mm -hmm. um years old, like over over ten years old, over fifteen years old, that song. And it's just interesting to me how timeless sometimes music is and the way people receive music is love. And it is, I did that song over 10 years ago. Wow. So, you, I mean, you've been in, in the music game for a while. I mean, had connections with Warner Brothers Records when you were a teen. Tell, tell us about that. And now independent artists and, you know, mature, you're still young, but, but you know, I like to think so. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> come on, come on. We could tell. No. We could tell you're still young. But as far as everything changing the music business, and then when you got, were you really pumped up when Warner Brothers uh, connected with you then? And yeah, how do you so, like it now? Uh, story in summation with Warner Brothers. I was, I think I was 14. Mm -hmm. I was about 14 years old, and it was really one of those 
it was really a fluky situation. It wasn't like some talent submission and anything like that. We happened to a, clo a friend of the family in New York City was getting married and they were having, they had a like a pretty, you know, a pretty like elaborate wedding. You know, they were well off. And um, I was in the wedding. I think I was 15. And I was in the wedding and um, they, you know, they knew I sing and they begged me to like sing and stuff. And I was still in that mode where I wasn't as shy as I was when I was a little girl singing, but I wasn't, you know, I was kind of like, uh, and they were like, no, sing, sing, sing. They wanted me to sing, you know, for the bride. She was like a sister to me. So I just sung. And right. one of their family members was an executive at Warner Brothers. And that's how they seen me sing. And then from that, they went straight, you know, straight to it, straight to my parents, straight to my mom. And, you know, and it was kind of like that. Like now, you know, it's just one of those things where it just doesn't happen like that. So it was like it was I was fortunate. It was by chance. But I was worthy of it with, you know, my right. talent at the time and things like that. So, yeah, I got the got into it with them, but um, not long into it. You know, they were just wanting to exploit me. They wanted to like really sell sex with me. I was young, I was attractive, you know, and, but you would think that they would have expounded on the talent. Like I really had talent. I was a songwriter then, a ranger then, and they were more interested in, you know, making me be more revealing and things like that. And my mom, they, she stepped in and just some kind of way, I still don't know the details as to how she eventually finagled me out of that situation, but I'm thankful for it. But in the right. meanwhile, I, you know, I made a lot of relationships. Um, I worked with a lot of people. I like to consider myself an artist artist. So mm -hmm. like it's a lot of people that are on the inside of the industry that um, some very popular, very successful, some more independent on certain levels. But they they know me, even though I'm not a household name. It's a lot of people that know me on the inside. Um, at one time, I I've done so many, you know, I guess you would call you the hook girl. Like, you know, I grazed so many people's hooks and, I, you know, I write it or I wrote written things for people. I've been on a song that Snoop Dogg produced before he was as big as he is, um, you know. So, yeah, but life, life and, um, you know, time went on. I never stopped doing music, um, but life happened in the middle of it. I'm a mother. I'm, I'm, you know, married, but my husband was always my drummer in my band. That's how we met. He was my drummer in my band even before. And, um, um, you know, it just stuff happened. And I always did music. I put out a few singles. I This album is actually not my first album. This is my sophomore album. My very first album, I was supposed to do it with Raphael Sadiq. Love um, him too. Yeah. Yeah. I was supposed to do my first album with him. Um, but he was actually, uh, he was doing, I believe it was Josh Stone at the time. He was like on a contract with them and, you know, some other stuff. He wanted to, it was just some other things that unfolded and I didn't get to do it with him. But I did work with, you know, his family members on that album um, and everything like that. And so, you know, I, I've done things, but now, you know, me being independent now, the label I'm under is, you know, the label me and my husband founded. I do have the major distribution through Sony Orchard, um, but I, you know, I'm independent. I'm in control, uh, creative control. I'm in control of the way I'm perceived. And it's important to me because, you know, my, my children and my family and my, um, you know, my spiritual self is the most important thing to me. So mm -hmm. I, I want to make sure that those things aren't compromised and, you know, and then everything else, you know, it just come what may. So I'm just happy that I got, have the control, you know, in that sense. And um, it's just been wonderful. And my album came from a lot of pain. Um, you know, I experienced a tragic close death to me a couple of years ago. And um, that's where it kind of, stem from you know they say people laugh to keep from crying i literally was singing to keep from crying mm -hmm. um and so you know this whole independent thing has been very um promising and it's been very divine i've been i'm very grateful for it happy anyways that's that's the title of your record so uh yeah you're 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 happy and you're moving on despite all these things that have gone on in your life and yeah uh, Still on standing. 
Yeah. And, and your daughters, you mentioned your husband, um, your daughter is also a important part of your life. There's a couple, there's like a mini documentary, a couple part series. Your daughters are with you in there. Oh, those are my sons. Oh, okay. Okay. I was reading. No, Sorry listen, about that. no it's okay because they have a lot of hair. And no, no, I'll go <laughs> ahead. Well, I, well, if that's the one you're talking about, the twins, the two. Yeah. Yeah. I just saw the, the thing on quickly. Yeah. Yeah. No, a lot of people assume that even in person. I could edit that part out. <laughs> I don't care. No, leave yeah. it. Leave it. Leave it. Okay. Okay. It's not, no, this, this this type of stuff is beautiful in a conversation. Oh, yeah. You know, that's what you miss in text messages and stuff. We right. Talk. Yeah, yeah. Right. Please. Right. No, but everybody um does that. I don't take no offense to it. I, hey, what the, what you're saying is that they have pretty faces. They could look. They look like little girls, but they have a lot of hair. I keep. I haven't cut their hair, so they right, have. Right. You know, so they have this, this hair. All it is puffball, and people do that all the time. But that is. Those are my only sons. So my husband and I, we have eight children. Okay. And out of those eight children, we have six daughters. Okay. Six, six straight. And we were never trying for a boy. And I, I got to find a new punchline, but I'm going to use it anyways. We were done at four, but the TV broke. <laughs> no. <laughs> but yeah. um, no, we had six daughters, you know, never, never planned. We didn't plan to have as many children. We didn't plan. We weren't trying to have a boy. And then our babies. Are identical twin boys mm -hmm. and so yeah they just happen to be on there but that's like a portion of this little documentary i have more segments coming where my girls actually talk they talk to them on their own and tell them about the process because i recorded my album at, at home in my own mm -hmm. home studio and they were there for all of it every they know every song i mean even the boys they they sang every lyric they know every single part of that album i did it you right. know Right under those conditions. <laughs> so you got a supportive household all around. Yeah, creative yeah. household too. Right. Mm -hmm. let, let me ask you about um also there's a, a dance challenge. Mm -hmm. Three young ladies in there. Who who are the ladies in there? So the, two of my, them of my daughters and one is my little niece. Okay, I got some points. I'm back on on, on the board. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, kidding. yeah. That's, so that's two of my daughters. That's my second and third daughter. Okay. And then right. my little niece. And yeah, so we just um I thought it was cool. You know, they 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 got next. OK, I'm just going to say this. My kids, if you're still doing this, you what? Five years from now, you're going to be sitting here talking to one of my kids. Probably right. my girls are so talented. They sing, they write, they draw, they they're so, so talented. And my little niece is just, you know, she's talented. And uh, I just thought it would be cute. You know, I'm trying to, like, catch up with mm -hmm. the trends and stuff because, you know, right. I'm not old, but I'm not. You know, in that generation, so this TikTok stuff and all of that is kind of new to me, and so I'm trying to just like, you know, I'm just trying to catch up on it marketing wise, and you know, thought it would be cool. I, you know, I think greedy is a, it's such like an eclectic, like fun, quirky, and it's like you know, it's it's a dance feel, and I wanted to portray that. Like I feel like that was a way I could portray it by seeing that. Are you so just go about so your business? Are you put you put some great humor and great great uh fashion sense in it? How long did it take you to in and out of the different costumes and the scenes? It, it, it couldn't have been done in one day. What is the the video greedy? Yeah, it was done in one day. One day, wow. So one, it was not even one day, it was done in Six, six hours, something like that. And I did all the costuming myself. I do all, I did the makeup. I did the directing. Literally, I just paid the videographer. He's, he's a very talented videographer in, in LA. And I just, I just paid him. And it, the funny thing about it is um, in that video is me and my cousin. Okay. And um, she, me and her have such a rapport. Like we are so close. And the videographer, you know, he just kind of let me do my thing, but he did suggest, you know, he didn't, he met me the first time when I did that. And he was kind of like, well, you know, like you think you need more like girls, you know, more people in a video, you know, cause he shoots other videos and stuff. And I was like, no, it's, it's just going to be me and her. And right. he was like, you know, you should, I was like, it's just going to be me and her. And then at the end of it, he was like, it was something like y'all were so dynamic together. Like I couldn't believe it was just two, two people, like, you right. know, two people. And it was because, we were not acting in that video. Right. That is how we are. And I am, and she is greedy for real in real life. And we were trying to hurry up for those scenes to be shot. So right. we that food, I ate 
all of that food when that video was when those scenes. Yeah, were that made me jealous because I can't eat that food anymore. But yeah. But guess what? You know that, that restaurant that I did it um, at um, Monty's. I don't know if you're familiar with Monty's in LA. So it's called Monty's Good Burger. Okay. They're a vegan restaurant. So everything I was eating was 100% plant based. Though oh, that sound, okay. that burger, and everything. Right. So it was like an underlying thing too. That and that, you know, they were awesome. They let me shoot there. You know, it was they're really funny. Sometimes in LA, you gotta have permits and stuff. And they called the owner and they was like, "Go ahead." And they just did everything for me. And I had a little like undertone there because I'm, I'm there. I'm into health, mm -hmm. and I'm definitely on a journey, a health journey now, where I'm trying to reset and change my life. So I just got off. I was doing fully raw vegan, no cooked food, only fruits and vegetables and water. My husband and I, we were doing that for 90 days, um, you know, but I'm just like trying to reset my palate. I don't plan on like staying fully raw. I'm going to probably incorporate some protein, whatever works for me. But I'm really interested in health and especially in our culture. I, mm -hmm. I want to promote that, too. So that was a little underlying thing that I was like, I use them. I could have went anywhere. I could have went to any little food spot. But I knew that they were 100% plant based, and right. I was trying to like promote, you know, some health too. Like, right. on the <laughs> yeah, that's great. I mean, good, good up on Monty. So, how about I want to ask you about your Caribbean roots? Tell, tell us about that. Yeah, so I have family that is from uh, Saint Elizabeth, Jamaica, okay. and Turks and Caicos. So I have some origins there, even though I was born and raised in Florida. But I have origins there, and those are my Caribbean roots. And some of my family, they moved to Florida too, and I, you know, grew up with them, raised with them. That spent most of their life in Jamaica. Right. But yeah, those are my roots. So I yeah. just I hold on to it. I feel so connected to it, even though I didn't grow up there. Mm -hmm. I feel so connected to it. Like I've always, like um, a lot of people in our culture, they chime in on Africa. And this is nothing like against Africa, but I just, I don't necessarily feel a connection with Africa, N you know? So like, just because we're brown skin Americans, it doesn't mean all of our origins is Africa, you know? And I just, I don't have that connection. I feel such that connection. And maybe the Africans, you know, I know that they, you know, come from Africa and they did settle in West Indies and the Caribbean and stuff like that. So not to disconnect myself, but I have just like a strong, strong connection to the Caribbean side mm -hmm. of it for some reason. I always have. So I just, I don't leave it out of anything. I didn't grow right. up there, but I'm like, this is who yeah. I am. It's always going to be running through him and maybe this some of your I music am. as well, right? Yes, this yeah. is who I am. So you're also an artist and um, tell you what brings you joy from that and, and what do you do? So I'm a published author and illustrator of my own series of whimsical children's books. Mm -hmm. You can find out all about that. My main character, her name is Tissy Rose, T-I-S-S-Y-R-O-S-E. -S 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 -E. You can go to TissyRose.com or TissyRose.net. And on Instagram, it's Tissy Rose Books. You can find out all about it. She's a little, little melting pot, little West Indies girl with her hair down to her calves and chocolate skin with green eyes. Right. But um, yeah, so the book, you know, I also, I, I draw, I paint, I sculpt. Um, I do glass art. I'm a flame worker. So, you know, I do art on, in, many, in many different mediums. But when I decided to do my children's book, I, I was trying to figure out how could I do all my art? And I, I came to writing mm -hmm. the book. I feel like that's the beginning of everything. You know, movies start from books, you know, uh, merchandising, like a lot of things start from that story. So I chose to go that route. I love writing. I love, you know, doing art. I love drawing. But I just chose to go that route because I felt like it was going to like open me up to everything. And it did. So I also have um, these little characters that I have that I started having in my book. They're little aquatic rocks these little mm -hmm. aquatic rock creatures called pobbles and i used to just draw them because i'm obsessed with water i love water and i love right, rock right. i've been rock counting for over 20 years you know i find gemstones i polish them i do all of that so i would create these little creatures they were little rocks that would hang out on the side of ponds and lagoons and they have little eyes and whatever and i started putting them in my book and then i started to sculpt them like from actual stones i would get stones and i started doing that and at first I was just doing it for myself. 
And then I had all of these, like what I call pobbles. I had all of these like lined up in my room, all on the shelf. And my husband was like, what are you doing? You sell that. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like, what are you doing? Like you're making all this. And I didn't think anybody would care about it. I'm like, I like this. Um, shockingly enough, people love it. I sell them all over the world now. I've been doing it for, I've been making them for over eight years. And I, yeah, I sell them everywhere. All so so where can people uh, contact you for that? Oh, I, I have an Instagram, which is Pobbletopia. Pobbles, P-O-B-B-L-E, T-O-P-I-A. Okay. And then a website, Pobbletopia.com. Okay. And it'll give you a whole breakdown of, you know, what they are. It'll show you pictures. I They're actual rocks and stones that I rock hound for. And I go get them from waterways because I said they're aquatic rocks. So I have to get them from waterways. I get them from streams, from um, shores of ocean, stuff like that. And I also share my whole process, like when I get them. And so the people that love it is people, uh, are people that love nature and art because, mm-hmm. You know, I actually like identify the stones that come with these little creature cards, kind of like the little cabbage patch birth certificates. And I'll tell like where this what this stone is, where I got it from. You know, like this is Felspar. I got it from Santa Barbara or I got this from Mexico or whatever. And I'll tell them like the truth, the origin of the stone. Tell them a little about it. And then I create this little blurb, imaginary blurb about this little character, you know, like what they have going on in their little world next to the pond but yeah it's yeah. that's that's my baby right there yeah you're passionate about it. that's great i love it yeah, I love it. yeah. so um I want you to check that stuff out too because now i oh, know yeah. you actually I, I, to it. yeah i was on your instagram page a little which bit. one you were on those the art ones or just my no no it must have been your other one you have a couple right yeah i i yeah. have a couple i even i even didn't mention this because i got so i know people will say, yeah, you really are Jamaican with all those jobs. No, <laughs> but <laughs> I have so many different areas. I didn't even mention. So I also have a letter subscription. I don't know if you know what that is for me with that. So I have a letter subscription. It's all stemmed from my book. So it's letters that my characters of my books host. So I got mm-hmm. Tissy Rose is the main character, the little girl. And then she has twin baby brothers that I had to create later after I finally had boys. My right. main character represented girl all the girls like me and my daughters and then when i had boys i was like i had to incorporate that so she has like two twin baby brothers rocky and bubba they have their own little series of books too and they're like some nature loving music loving little boys you know so right. i have these letters that i let each one of the characters host so one of them is like an imagined letter basically it's these fictional little two-page stories that front and back hand illustrated but they're printed out professionally the same company that prints my books and i people subscribe to it and they get it monthly and it's like you know i call it happy mail like you know we don't get mail anymore you know like pen pal stuff like that yeah so they'll get that and then the one that the boy characters host is called explore and they and it's they go to actual places and cover actual places. Like I could cover Louisiana. I could cover China one day, you know, one month or whatever. And some families get it. They use it as a homeschool lesson, geography lesson for their children. Um, I have some subscribers that get it for themselves. I have a 70 year old woman that gets the letters on her own. Um, Mm -hmm. I have men that get it on their own. I send it out UK. I have international and it's, that's my way of being able They're like little stories and I'm able to write, and illustrate like little books. Each one of them is equivalent to a book. If I broke it up into a children's book, it would be like, you know, a 20 page book. Mm -hmm. And so I, I'm able to, I've done, I've been doing that for a couple years. Um, I've done, you know, over 70 letter subscriptions so far. And yeah, so that's also stemmed from that. So it's a lot. It seems like it's all over the place, but if you go, to my website, you go, everything is there. It explains yeah. it. And then I'll Just make explore. It. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> find it, find out the, the, the total package of Cloet, right? Yes. All yeah. those things are me. You see, you see, right. I got my little ears. I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm how I am. I don't know how I I'm just how I am. Right. Hey, that's, that's, you're true yeah. to yourself. So, yeah. Hey, we got to talk about a, a couple people. First, we want to talk about our friend Marcus Machado, great guitarist and, um, how, how did you connect? And, you know, people should go to cloette.com or, or youtube.com and look up Cloette's videos. There's a performance with Marcus Machado, your husband as well. Hey, yeah. g- before we get into Marcus, tell us your husband's name. Dom P. 
Okay. Dom P. That's there what he goes. He goes by Dom P. Yeah. Keep in the rhythm for the band and, and you're saying, yeah. 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 And he's gonna he's gonna have his site coming up soon, Dom P music. He's a very he's a very meek, very humble man. Mm -hmm. And um everything that you see about me or that you think is dynamic, understand he is one thousand percent the counterpart of that. He's just he's just really low key. You know, um, just like the song I did with Marcus Machado, Come Back, you know, right. he produced the music for it. Um, so, yeah, he is, you know, you'll be seeing a, a lot more of him, but that's just who he is. He's just he's just a laid back genius. And that's why I love him. But, yeah, he, he he's the heartbeat. He's the heartbeat of my life, my family and mm -hmm. the music. Literally, mm -hmm. he's a like fantastic drummer. Fantastic. And Marcus, of course, great guitarist. We had him on the show oh, before, yeah. and he's on the East Coast still, right? Yeah, I believe he's in New York. New York, yeah, somewhere. yeah, yeah. But Marcus is man. Listen, I can't say enough about Marcus. Like, as a person, like I'm, I'm a, I'm the type of person that I believe in people, like actual relationships and genuineness. You know, I'm all heart. So he is such a wonderful person. He's a mm -hmm. wonderful man, aside from like music. But then on top of that, he is so talented. And I mean, he's like insane. It's like I've never seen anybody stand there so calm. But the stuff he's doing is otherworldly. It's like he's doing stuff like Prince. Like he should have his butt out in some pants, turned around like Prince. But he's just like, oh, he's giving that same thing. But he just gives it with just the most zen presence and he's just he's amazing and he's so professional and he's so he's such he's just such a good person and mm -hmm. like our song that we did together i remember you know i featured some someone else is featured on my album as well but just even working with people over the years you know especially he, he's really busy he's gotten busier and you know as soon as i came to him and asked him about you know featuring he was he was right on it. Oh, of course. Sure. You know, send him the music. I mean, he, within like a day or two, he sent it, but everything was done. He was like, it's back. Here are the files. Here the, here's this. Here's that. You know, as if in, in, in a lot of ways, I, I'm not going to say like, I don't like to measure like success, but in a lot of ways, he was busier than me. He was doing more prominent things than I was at the time. So you would think like, you know, he treated me like a priority, like like I was Beyonce or something, you know, mm -hmm. and he was doing more than me at the time. So it just told me a lot about him. He's just he's just he's just on point. He's just on point. Yeah, it's great. Great. You got connection with talented and, and most important, good people that you look forward to, to spending time with and, and creating. Yeah. yeah. So, Cloette, Happy Anyways, it's available everywhere on online. And where's the best place you want to steer people to get your music? Uh, I mean, I would steer them probably to Apple because, okay. you know, with Spotify. I don't know. I don't I don't think I think it's harder for me to get some type of revenue from it. Right, um, right. Their system is a little different. So I like I want people to actually download it, stream it so I can maybe get a little something. You know, I worked hard on it. I wrote and arranged every single song you know other than music is love so like i have all my publishing so it really comes to me you know so uh i would like for people to download it and stream it from anywhere that you know i'm going to benefit from it i just i'm not that sure i'm not that familiar with spotify system but i've right. kind of heard like the way they do it i'd have to be on such a large scale to even benefit from it yeah but yeah you hear a lot about that importantly, i just i want people to hear me mm -hmm. i want to be listened to so i don't care if you go on youtube and you know the way my stuff is distributed it, there's a like you can type it up on youtube and you can hear my songs for free you know like mm -hmm. i don't care how you do it just listen to me and when, when you're on the promo tour and and next year doing concerts around the states here come out to the show and and pick up the cd bring some extra money that's for sure Right, right, right. Yeah. And I, I'm going to get records. I'm having vinyls printed up. Oh, yeah, too. that's cool. Yeah. So, yeah, I have vinyls printed up as well. I'm excited about the vinyls because I grew up, that's all I grew up listening to. My dad was just like a music head and he, I'm the baby of my family. Okay. And I know songs and stuff I probably shouldn't even know because of my dad and my old, like I know one hit wonders from the 70s. Like, you know, I grew up listening to 
Otis Red and Sam and Dave, Bobby Womack, right. James Taylor, you know, and he was always on vinyl. When I was a little girl, you know, my dad taught me how to put the needle right on. and yeah. So that vinyl is probably uh, probably the most sentimental thing. Like, I can't wait till my vinyl comes out. <laughs> yeah, and it, and it made a kind of a resurgence that, I mean, that which is nice. I grew up on the vinyl, too. I mean, I used to belong to the record pools, and they give us like 10 records a week. We'd have to do a review and submit it. And yeah, still got some of those records. It was a great time. <laughs> That's why you that's why you listen to people's music and actually look at it because you came from an era where right. people did that. Like you had to know what was going on with the artist, with the yeah, person. Yeah. You know? But nowadays people just they just go through the motion. Nobody nobody listens to music anymore. You know, it, it is I think it takes for them, it's this younger generation too. Like it takes for them to get to a certain place in their life. Cause there's a saying, you know, like when you're happy you listen to the music, but when you're sad, you listen to the lyrics. So mm -hmm. I think yeah. that in when our life, when things start happening to us, we start experiencing death and, you know, and just life starts happening as you get older. I think that's the people are more interested in like really like connecting with the music or what they're hearing. But it's, it's a, it's like a culture now that I, I don't think people really listen to music anymore. Yeah. Yeah, it's a shame. I mean, there, there's so much. I used to dig up the liner notes and read everything, and I knew the names from that. And, you know, I had to, we'll, we'll get on before we, we wrap up. We we're going to talk about Prince, but I had a friend, younger friend in, in his 20s, who was watching Prince playing acoustic guitar in New York at Webster Hall. And he says, Oh, I didn't even know he played guitar. Thinking, because he <laughs> probably saw some videos where he's dancing and stuff like that and didn't even know the, the whole background. So, yeah, right. it's a different. Not all people are like. Yeah, right. You know, of course. But I mean, he appreciated Prince's music, but I was yeah. like, wow. <laughs> it's a it's a different generation, but I, you know, like I said, I I just want to be heard. I want to be heard because like this body of work with this album that I did, it wasn't just about, um, like you know, I was just trying to do something for numbers or anything like that. It had nothing to do with that. It really came from a place where you know i had i had to decide to live or die mm -hmm. and i and i used it as survival like i decided to heal on purpose and this body of work is like if you really really delve into it and listen to it i i consider it i'm very proud of it i'm very proud of myself cuz i know what place it came it came from a very authentic very real place you know i don't have this i don't like everything you hear on that album is what mm -hmm. you will get live. Like, I don't need anything. I don't need nothing. I don't need a mic. I don't need anything. Like, I'm going to exude that same thing. And I think it's something to be uh, something to be applauded, something to be acknowledged. And it's just, you know, but my competition now is, you know, standing on stage with a leotard on, uh, you know, yeah. or whatever, or, you know, just being just over-sexualized. Like, I don't understand this over sexualization that's happening especially within our culture and our women like to me there's no other race of woman that is exploited like a brown woman in music nowadays you know i don't understand the correlation of you having on a g-string and singing a song or rapping you know i'm used to whitney houston you know with a little bit of sweat above her lip up there killing it and beautiful right you know, even with clothes on. So, you know, it's like, it's a strange time for me. So however I can be marketed in my entirety and in my worth. And, you know, I just want to be heard. I want people to slow down and listen to me and listen to my lyrics, listen to my arrangements, listen to, and I did all of this as a mother of eight. I did all of this in extreme grief. I did all of this confused, trying to figure out where I was at. You know, I did all of this in in these in this place in my life that it said that you can't do it. Mm -hmm. You know, and so I just, I just, I just want however that can happen. I want people to understand my story. In the end, we'll all be stories, but you know, I want I want to tell my own through music and art. And, you know, so it'll never be a misconception of what, who Chloe was and is. It'll have, it will have come straight yeah. to me. 
Yeah, Happy Anyways is a, a great example of that. And um, we just tell our viewers, listeners, Happy Anyways, go to Apple, go to cloet.com, also YouTube, wherever Spotify. you can hear it, Spotify. Andrew, Pandora. It's, it's, all, it's all out there. Hey, before, you before we uh, bid adieu, we, we were talking off air before about Prince and, you know, mutual fans of Prince. And, and you, you've worked with some of the people who've been around Prince and work with him. Tell, tell us your connection with that roundabout way. So um, one of Prince, like his prodigies and someone he worked with, his name is John Richard. Mm -hmm. And um, I knew John Richard when he was a little boy. My, he's from my hometown. And I'm a little older than him. So I that's what I'm saying. Look, we were both kids, but he was a little younger than me. Um, my mom is a professional hairstylist, and she used to be his mom's um, hairstylist. She used to cut his hair and everything. But he's like an excellent um, bass. Um, he plays the bass. Yeah, he plays the bass. And he's like an excellent bassist. When you get the chance, just like Google John Richard. It's J-O-N Richard. Okay. And um, so Prince ended up taking him under his wing. He stayed with Prince about two years um, at his residence and they did a lot of music together and everything. And I've worked with John, you know, and I've even his father, his dad had a record label at one time. I was on his dad's record label and, um, you know, and just other people within the industry that have either, you know, had a close relationship with Prince or worked with him. And I always wanted to work. I always loved Prince. I don't even understand how our paths never crossed, but they didn't. And I, I, I always wanted to work with him. But he is he was just um everybody he was he was he was magnificent. Yeah, consummate performer and artist, songwriter, great performer on stage, yeah. So yeah. definitely loved and missed. So very much so. Him and him and Michael. I mean, there's so many yeah, that I yeah. love, but I just I I have a special place in my heart for Michael Jackson too. I mean, I don't think that he is really regarded, um, you know, as much as he should be. I think even his heart. Like, I don't agree with all of the things that people think about Michael Jackson. I think I thought he was a beautiful person in his heart, and then on top of that, he's just amazing. But that's just my own personal opinion. But. Yeah. Yeah, I had the chance to see him once at Madison Square Garden with the Jacks and Stacy Lattisaw opened up. Wow. You yeah. see, you got such special moments. <laughs> so kind of channel those to me. Give them yeah. to me. Like, there's gonna, yeah, there's there's gonna be people who are gonna be like them. I mean it's gonna be tough. We may never see it, but yeah. Oh, they once in a lifetime, like Michael Jordan. You know, that's so yeah. I, I love this once in a lifetime. Like I I just think I think it's amazing that I existed. In a in a time frame in a universe that 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 one particular type of thing there'll never be a, another prince not not in this life or the next right, you know yeah. and there'll be something as wonderful as him but it won't be that yeah just it like, won't be you yeah. know so that's just amazing I'm glad I don't care if I was a little girl when it was happening I was here I was on Earth with him right and I, I was a I still am a New York Knicks fan so Jordan was like our biggest rival but. Oh, I love when people Jordan. say who who's the best basketball player you ever saw in your lifetime. I'll still say MJ, but Michael Jordan. You know, he yeah. is, you know, there'll never been nothing else like him. There's people that are be will be as great in their way. Never be another Michael Jordan. His I know it's like we're not talking about basketball, but I gotta say this. I'm a big basketball fan. Like I played basketball. I had a full paid scholarship for basketball to college, all of that. Okay. And Michael Jordan, his mechanics. Mm -hmm. He was built for basketball. Like, I can't explain it, but if there was, like, a perfect physique and the, his mechanics, the way he played, his style, it was like he was, it was, like he was created for that. And that's yeah, how he, came out of, he came out of retirement, and I think he wore the same sneakers, the first Air Jordans, and he still dropped, like, 50 points on the Knicks. <laughs> yeah, remember, we had, remember when he had the flu? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, look, it was crazy. Wow. We talk about him all day. And that's why the Knicks, uh, we never won a championship because <laughs> him and Scotty Pippen, <laughs> pretty I'm much. Sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. That's okay. Maybe, I'll maybe. Wrong, man, I'm sorry that happened to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. So, hey, it's been a real pleasure, Cloette, and great yeah. to finally meet you. And and we love the love the record. Love love uh, for our viewers to check it out. Thank and, you. and buy and support Cloette.